Welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, January 7, 2024. For our junior high students, ages 12 to 14, I do not own the rights to this music. The title of today's story, Saving as Many as Possible. Alex started her small business when she was 12, and at 15, she was hiring her second employee. She told her new hire, Jackie, a 13-year-old freshman, that her business was about saving their neighborhood. Her business was a library that all the neighborhood children could use. It didn't make much money, but Alex knew she was making a difference in the community. We're teaching children to enjoy reading, Alex told Jackie, and we're teaching them to be little saviors. Jackie asked Alex what she meant by that. I'm a Christian. I believe that Jesus is the savior of the world. But Alex looked at Jackie to make sure she was listening. I also believe a part of having a faith is about claiming that faith for yourself. I think that Jesus makes us little saviors of the world. I've never heard that before, Jackie said. Alex put her arm around Jackie's shoulders and told her, Stick with me and you'll learn all kinds of things you've never heard before. They walked through the library that Alex had created. Over the last three years, it was on the enclosed porch her father built. She, he added a section each summer after Alex started her project. He wanted a place to sit and relax after work. Alex said, I tell him that there's no place better plan to relax than in a room filled with books. Jackie nodded and thumbed a few of the titles. She said, I always wanted to be a librarian. You'll be that and more, said Alex. You'll be changing our little world around here. Today's mem memory verse is Luke chapter 6 verse 9. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing, is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? The lesson scripture is coming out of Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath, after the first, that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? And Jesus answering them said, Have ye not read so much as this, what David did, when himself was a hungered, and they which were with him, how he went into the house of God, and did take and eat the showbread, and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone? And he said unto them, That the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. Love, mercy, and the Sabbath. Jesus stressed service to others over heeding the letter of the law. The religious leaders who were his contemporaries hated him. He taught with authority and people marveled at the clear, simple ways he explained faith. As we see in the scripture, Jesus' defiance of tradition set him on a course of conflict with Jewish religious officials that will ultimately bring about in his death. But Jesus was about doing good. His teachings were about the practice of goodness and mercy. Rather than teaching and proclaiming another religious dogma, Jesus was about living for the kingdom of God. His teaching about the Sabbath centered on doing good and living mercifully. 
and not just observing a strict reading of the law. How to read the scriptures. Number one, whenever you can, read scripture with other people. Number two, read the scriptures aloud in large chunks. Number three, listen for what God is saying at the moment to you. Number four, come to scripture regularly to hear from God. Fill in the blank scriptures or words. Number one, Jesus and his disciples were accused on acting unlawfully on the holy day. Fill in the blank. Number two, blank is the Lord of the Sabbath. Number three, the Pharisees wondered if Jesus would blank on the Sabbath. Make sure to search the scriptures. Spend time in class asking about each other's weeks. As a group, reflect together on times when you all were individually able to do good. Also, use this time to repent of moments when you didn't do good because of fear or disinterest. Changing the rules. Often rules and limitations set by others make it difficult for us to help one another. As Christians, we change the world's rules and we live by rules of love. We live for God and for others. Most people who aren't Christians find that unsettling. Even Christians are used to looking out for themselves. A part of maturing in faith is regularly putting other people first. People whom we won't benefit from. People who may even be an enemy. What causes us to want to help others? In Jesus, we see a person who is great at meeting the needs of others. He puts others first. His coming to the world was an exercise in this very generous act of putting others before himself. Jesus, who is Lord of the Sabbath, teaches that acts of mercy and justice should be practiced all the time. As his followers, we are not alone when we live in this way. We are joining him, walking in his steps when we do good. Rest. The spiritual habit of observing Sabbath is basically unknown to most Christians. The Holy Day is a full 24 hours when we stop working and reflect on what work God has done. Try to build this discipline into your life this week. Start with an hour a day. If you can, stop working on things you ordinarily work on. If you must do something, do something you enjoy. Play. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.